we're going to start today's Tuesday, July 14, 2020, to the building committee meeting of the San Manuel Society Board of Trustees. And I call this meeting to order at exactly uh, 5.52 p.m. 5.52, I mean, 5.32, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, move on to agenda item number two, uh, 2.1, the preparation of the Los, from Los Indios presentation, former Los Indios Elementary School. Dr. Farmer. Yes, sir. And I believe we have uh, Mr. Hakama from the city of Los Indios to uh, present to the board. Mr. Hawk, looks like we've got you now. If you would like to address the board, considering the uh, Los Indios Elementary School. Yes, sir, sorry about that, was muted. I believe the mayor is on here as well. I don't, I don't know, he may not be showing up. Uh, but um, regardless, yes, um, as you know, we have submitted a, a request to the school board regarding the lease of Los Indios Elementary School. Uh, my name is Jared Hawkham. I'm the city administrator for the city of Los Indios. Um, We've had a very long positive relationship with the San Diego School District, uh, seeing other properties from you. Uh, we have a property that we have a park on that we are just now expanding and about to add a pavilion and some more facilities to. Uh, we have a community facility that was built, a community building that serves the community that was built several years ago on a parcel that they released to us. Um, in fact, in preparation for your, your voting coming up in November. Uh, and so we, we've been able to repurpose the facilities that SBACISD has in Los Angeles that it's no longer using and put them to use in the community. And also, of course, for the uh, school district of the burden of maintaining those facilities. The city has been doing that as, as it, at its expense. And so we respectfully ask for you to consider uh, leasing as this facility as well. It's no longer being used by the Head Start. My understanding is they are not intending to return to that area due to low enrollment uh, in, in the Los Indios area. And so this is a way for us to convert that to a positive use. Um, we have some great programs that we do have these facilities. I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but we have a health education program that we're running from there. Um, you know, we provide other, other services to the community out of these buildings. And so this would be something that would be uh, greatly appreciated by the city, but also I think provide a lot of extra services to the citizens in Los Indios. Thank you. And, and I'll just follow up on that. We have been notified by uh, Ninos that they will not be uh, holding their, their head start there. And I believe they uh, will be withdrawn by sometime in August. So the building is available um, from administrator perspective. We have no, um, no plans to use those buildings out there. Um, they're not needed for instructional space, e even for storage. We don't we don't have that need, so they they are available. Dr. Corman, is that the building that's right next to the community building, or uh, where is it located again? I think it's going to be the one right, right next door to that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that presentation, Mr. Hockerman. I, I think it's a, a great opportunity for us to continue that relationship with Los Angeles. Uh We really appreciate uh, you all support. And uh, it's a cohesive relationship, and I think you know I think it's a great opportunity for us to 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 go ahead and lease it to y'all, so y'all can use it for for the betterment of the community, and uh, and it'll benefit both San Benito and and Los Angeles. So I'm all in favor. Any questions? Agenda item. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Mr. Talking. Thank you very much. You got it. All right, let's move on to two point two update presentation by Brighton Group LLC. Dr. Carmen. Yes, sir. I think we're going to have several people we're going to allow into the Zoom meeting. It looks like Mr. Palacios is there. Uh, Ms. Warren is there. Sorry, I'm trying to look at this other screen. Mr. Macheska is going to be part of them, part of that group. Uh, David Iglesias, our architect from PBK. Mike Alex, architect from ROFA. Uh, Ms. Warren. Should be admitted. Okay. 
Hopefully it's everybody. Mr. Palacios, does it look like everybody's on the screen that should be on the screen? Yes, sir. Uh, we do have Mike Alvin We have David Iglesias with PBK, uh, Laura Warren uh, with our group, uh, Alice and I. We also have Robert Macheska on the civil engineering team for the PAC and the NAT. And if you'd like, without further ado, I can get started. Uh, there'll be a point where David uh, chimes in, and then we'll roll over to the civil uh, package for PAC and NAT. And then I'll turn it over to Mike Alex for the uh, pack in that presentation and we'll close after that. Uh, but if you'd like, uh, we can get started. Uh, first and foremost, uh, board members, thank you for joining us today. We're, we're honored to be here today. Oh, we got a presentation set for y'all. Hopefully you'll be pleased for, for, uh, with where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen and come into uh, part of the presentation on the indoor. And so we're going to get started on the indoor. And uh, just let me know if for some reason you're not seeing what I'm trying to present. I can't see anything. Okay. I only see Robert. <laughs> okay, Dr. Furman, uh, right now we're projecting, and I don't know, are you, are you able to see? Nothing at this point. Okay. No, sir. No, there's only nine nine uh, boxes right now. Greens. Uh, yeah. Okay. Are you able to see now? There. Now, now we, we got it. it. Okay. Yes. Hi there. So so that is uh, today's drone uh, footage, obviously, of the indoor uh, practice facility. They're, they're deep in construction. Uh, structural construction continues to go on. A couple of highlights, and then I'll turn it over to David. Obviously, this, this building is a 68,700 square feet facility. Uh, we, we, we surpassed Brownsville's indoor facility. Uh, theirs is 31,123 square feet. Uh, what we did in the very beginning was to make sure that we didn't reinvent the wheel and we, we kind of improved from where their mistakes were. Uh, their, their Brownsville's indoor facility does not have a lobby, ours does, uh, does not have an end zone, no wall padding, no catwalk, no drop nets or dividers, and they got a limited runoff area and the turf markings are only for football. Um, the, ours uh, is, an, is a very enhanced building uh, we didn't mess with the EVE Heights. Uh, it's all inclusive uh, to every sport you have. Uh, we do have an end zone. Uh, we do have uh, all the markings for all the different sports uh, groups that you will be utilizing this building. Uh, they are moving uh, relatively pretty quick. Uh, part of today's presentations will go on a lot of the finish outs uh, on the interiors and exteriors. A uh, couple of, couple of uh, next steps, once we do uh, the district has been involved in that process in deciding some of the finish outs. Uh, we are set for September completion somewhere around September, uh, se September October, uh, and then we sh we should be turning over this facility over to the over to the district. As you can see, they're already starting to put up the walls, uh, the CMU walls. Uh, but we're really excited. Things are really moving relatively pretty quick on the project. Uh, at this point, any questions in regards to the construction? Um, Again, uh, Hellas has been doing an exceptional job. Uh, we continue to work with them on any RFIs. Uh, David's group has been uh, really prudent to clear a lot of those. Uh, and some of the, you know, some of the more, uh, uh, there hasn't been any, any major issues to it, uh, but it's been running relatively pretty smooth. That uh, video was done today. Uh, we do have images. Now all images and video will be emailed to all board members, uh, just so you can see its current state as of today. Uh, David, are you on? <clears throat> yes, I'm here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing now. I can, David, if you want to share the the next your yeah. package, or I can put it up. It's entirely up to you. Um, I, I can go in. Well, you can go in and put it up, Joseph. That's fine since you have control right now. Okay, so I'm going to uh, actually, David. Why don't you do it right now while I? Uh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 
Hi, Mike. Okay, can you all see the screen? Yes. Okay. So uh, we put together a little packet um, showing some of the uh, exterior renderings and some of the interior finishes that have been uh, selected thus far. So we worked along with uh, the district for uh, some of these options. Uh, some of the renderings or the uh, exterior renderings are what we've been showing since the uh, conception, initial conceptual design, uh, just a little more refined. Uh, this is the main entry. Uh, we have a, a gray uh, metal panel color with some axis uh, trim um, with the uh, standard uh, gold color um, from San Benito with the actual Pantone uh, gold color that is the um, standard color for the district. Uh, the logo uh, obviously here it does, doesn't necessarily have to be that, but that's just what we're showing at this time. So we can work with the district if, if we want to proceed with that specific logo. Um, we have the uh, canopy up here at the entry with the uh, SBCISD um, uh, name at the above the uh, canopy. <clears throat> These are just some um, alternate elevations. This would be the rear elevation that faces um, east. Um, this is the uh, north elevation that actually faces the um, stadium. So you can see here we have a portico here where this uh, overhead door is. Um, if they were to utilize this during the uh, game for halftime use, et cetera, this would be the, uh, the main uh, entry point. Um, and you can see here, this would be on the uh, south end, which would be the side visible from the expressway. And you can see we've implemented uh, various shades of the gray uh, metal panel, uh, as well as the uh, purple colored panel. We do have the uh, purple colored doors with gold trim. All the gutters and downspouts are shown to have the uh, gold trim as well. Here's a uh, perspective uh, view from kind of where the uh, baseball stadium is or the existing show house at this point, kind of view from that uh, perspective and then the uh, main entry here. As we come into, um, this is the uh, interior boards that we uh, established. Uh, I have to give credit to our interior designer, Erica, for putting this together. Once we receive the uh, submittals for the uh, paint, all the interior finishes for the paint, ceramic tile, laminate, LVT, sports flooring, um, et cetera, um, you know, she, she put together this palette trying to tie in, you know, some of the school colors um, to develop, you know, spirit and so forth as far as what we can do with the uh, paint and with the flooring and the options that we had available to us by the specific vendors that were uh, selected for the for the project. Um, you can see here some of the interior views. This would be a view from the lobby, the main entrance. Um, we did have a, an addition where we were adding a new storage building, a new storage uh, room and an office into the lobby uh, that was requested um, uh, recently. So we could uh, utilize some of that additional square footage we had available in the lobby. Um, these are some of the uh, paint uh, striping that we've uh, developed, um, you know, just implementing school colors, um, nothing too uh, crazy exaggerated, but, you know, we didn't want to be too uh, simple either. So, you know, these slanted line patterns here, um, we did present some of this to the uh, school district. They had some comments. We made a couple of revisions as far as the uh, finishes as well. Uh, you can see here the LVT flooring options. Um, we're using two different color patterns. Uh, just to try to help identify some of the space. This would be a view from within the weight room. Um, so we have the sports flooring. We have two different colors we're using for the sports flooring. Uh, the center area would have the, the black with the purple speckles. And then we're using a, a gray outline, uh, again, with the paint color striping. The underside of the uh, structure would be painted black. Uh, the structure itself would be painted gray. Uh, some of the graphics we're proposing as well. <clears throat> Here's an interior view. Um, all the interior of the actual practice facility, as far as the structure and the underside of the uh, structure would be white. 
Um, the only color would be um, the banding we have around the uh, where the wall pads would be installed around the perimeter. Um, here's a, a design of the ceramic tile. Uh, we have ceramic tile on the uh, what we consider the wet walls where the plumbing fixtures are located. Um, so the uh, ceramic tile that was um, based on the ceramic tile that was submitted, these are the uh, design options that were proposed uh, just to add some some uh, pop in the uh, in the restrooms. So all of this uh, information um, has already been provided to to Hellas. And um, like I said, I'd like to thank Eric, our interior designer, for putting this together um, and putting this uh, packet together for you guys. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. It was very nicely put. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we're excited. Yes, we are too. <laughs> okay, Dr. Carm, if there's any, if any board members have any questions pertaining to the indoor, we can address them at this point. If not, I can move over to the uh, civil package of the pack and the NAT. Uh, would you like us to proceed to that? Well, Mr. Palacios, I, I think one of the, the most pressing questions, and I know we, every, every, every time with this, these projects come about is, is a timeline. Yes, sir. Um, uh, so I know it's always uh, been, you know, at the forefront. So uh, can you just please uh, just brief us on that, please? Yeah. So uh, we have been in construction. Originally, we were looking at uh, May to June to be at substantial completion. Uh, during the COVID period, it did possess a little bit of delay from our suppliers. Uh, the other thing is we had an unusual period of rain. Uh, for a few weeks that uh, affected us just not not so much uh, but we are set to have this building uh, we're hoping substantial completion somewhere within the September month of this year uh, at that time we'll uh, we'll start doing all the proper uh, inspections uh, we'll be coordinating with the uh, the occupancy department with the city of San Benito um, we're, we're looking at, at early fall having this facility turned over to the district Okay, great. Any more questions? Okay, you can move. You can go on to the net and the pad, Mr. Palacios. Okay, so uh, David, if you could. Uh, sure, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David, I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, David. Appreciate uh -huh, the presentation, you. sir. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you, thank you Mr. Palacios. Thank you, guys. Okay, so. I, uh, can you see my screen at this point? It should be the nope. plans. No. Okay, so let me, bear with me one second. Okay. How about that? There you go. Yes, uh, we can see. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I do have Robert. Uh, Robert, are you on the line? I'm here. Okay, great, great. Uh, Robert, um, so the, your civil team, uh, GDJ Engineering, has been working diligently on the uh, civil design plans, which in, are inclusive to the irrigation, uh, siphon, drainage crossing, and grand entrance. Uh, also, the access roadway that you see coming down uh, through the facility, the on-site, off-site utilities, the parking, landscaping, lighting, drainage, uh, the building pad site, and uh, the geo piers. Uh, basically, the last two are just coordinating with the ROFA group, uh, with their structural and uh, foundation uh, engineer, and then the GOPRs groups that's going to come in and do some ground treatment uh, systems. But Robert, you want to walk through the next couple of slides, and uh, I'll control them uh, if you want me to go. Let me know when you want me to switch through them. Sure, sure. So this here is our, our overall site plan. As, as everybody knows, um, there at the top, we already have the uh, irrigation structure complete and we are now under construction on the drainage and the actual grand entrance. Um, so hopefully we have uh, the contractor already um, moving through that. So we should be done with that, which will lead us directly into GMP one. And um, if we want to go over to the next slide, Joseph. Yes, sir. Oh, so. So what this represents is our uh, is our utility uh, layout. It, this is all the utility lines for the project. This will be included in GMP one, which would be also inclusive of the uh, construction access staging and partial drainage. 
So we're, uh, we're in the process of getting that uh, GMP-1 package to the contractor so they can price it. Um, we were able to, thanks to, uh, to Mr. Palacios and Dr. Carmen, we've had, and they can attest to this, multiple meetings with the city on that uh, on the sewer issue. Um, we were able to address it. We were able to design it in a way that we can gravity flow to the lift station. And the city has uh, committed to upgrade the lift station at their own cost. Uh, so that's a great benefit to the school district. Um, you know, it was a tireless effort, but we got through it and we're, uh, we're moving forward with that. So that we cleared that hurdle. So all this package should be submitted to the contractor for GMP number one to go out uh, for pricing. We've also, if you want to move to the next one, Joseph, um, we've also, you know, we didn't stop there. We've also concurrently been doing the remaining uh, design elements in preparation. So we get ahead of the game in preparation for the, the final, the next GMP package. We already have all of our, uh, our full drainage components, our paving design completed. And if you want to go to the next slide, uh, we have our lighting layouts uh, about 60, 70% complete. So that way, once we get that GMP number one package to the contractor, we'll be ready to turn around and get the next GMP package done on our on our end as, as you know within a matter of of a couple of weeks. So we're we're moving forward as quickly as we can. We know time is of the essence, and we want to make sure that we get all of this stuff in uh, and ready to get built. So there's there's no delay. There's no you know you guys see construction continuously throughout. Um, so on the civil side, that's all I have. If anybody has any questions. If I could just cover one point. So originally we had a set budget. Once we put all these elements together on all of these, uh, on, on all the elements of GDJ is inclusive to the civil package, we were at two and a half mil. Uh, we're happy to report we're cl getting closer to about 1.7 million, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, we believe that competitively we should get some good pricing in there. And at the end of the day, we're hoping we're, we're going to be pleased uh, to be under budget in regards to the civil package. Uh, that was uh, critically helpful when uh, we started dealing with the packet NAT in regards to the budget as well as uh, all the components that come with the packet NAT. But Bob, thank you for all y'all's work. Uh, you and your team, uh, we appreciate it. Yes, sir, thank you very much. And uh, any questions before I let Bob uh, off the hook here? <laughs> package. <laughs> No, we just want to thank him so much for the presentation, but we really appreciate I've got, that I've got a presentation. Question. Yeah, that was me? very good. Thank you. Somebody has a question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Excellent. Yeah. Now, this is the facility over there by uh, the expressway, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, what, what happened with the, uh, with the water leak out there, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually glad you asked. Uh, and not that we're excited about the situation, but if I can go back to this. Uh, can you see my screen again? No. Okay, so uh, let me just go back. Uh, so there's a subcontractor working on that project with NM Contractors. NM Contractors was hired to do the last section of what is the drainage crossing. Uh, okay. While they were digging, they have all the permits, textile permits. I think the, the San Benito News uh, misquoted uh, uh, the fact that there were no permits. They are permits. We got TxDOT uh, issued a permit, the Irrigation District issued a permit, and the Drainage District issued a permit. The city did review the plans February 6th. They gave us an approval on the plans. Uh, Robert was in that meeting. They asked us for all permits. We gave them the permits, and uh, we were pretty much given a notice to proceed. They started construction. Uh, the subcontractor that was doing the excavation hit a water line. Uh, they did all the proper dig tests. Uh, it's unfortunate in construction. There's it's not just water lines that are that you know are you know they'll they'll spot them at a certain depth and all of a sudden we realize that they're not at that depth. Uh, so we we were we we realized that they hit it on on a Friday. I think it was July the third. Uh, immediately they contacted us. They contacted the city of San Benito. Uh, it was contained. Uh, I know everybody had uh, water. Uh, there was a loss of pressure of some sort. But at the end of the day, bottom line. Uh, the subcontr the contractors, uh, that's a, their responsibility. Uh, they will cover the loss as well as the damages on that cut line. Uh, since then, the line has been repaired. There's a valve there now. And right now, NM Contractors is coordinating with the city of San Benito to, to compensate them for that repair and the loss of water. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Palacios, for the clarification. I think it's important, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that uh, I, I think the uh, news misquoted some of the information. 
Uh, and again, I'll, I'll emphasize this to administration that it's important to share that information, even if it's uh, on a timely manner, um, you know, because we get calls on it. But uh, nonetheless, I, I found out that it was contained almost immediately. So, yeah. I, I, you know, and, and out of construction, like you said, it, it, things that happen. And, and as long as it's, it's taken care of, you know, we're good to go. So thank you very much, Mr. Palacios, for everything. Yeah. Yeah, and if I can say, you know, I mean, I know when you drive by there, it doesn't seem like much, but they're excavating a great deal. There are some, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you got a drainage structure that's never had an access there. So these are, these are things that we're dancing around. We're praying that none of the subs or the contractors, uh, you know, affect water or life and safety or anything. So we try to keep a, 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 a tight leash on these things, but you know, there's 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 always some sort of error but it was contained immediately and it's been addressed. Appreciate we'll, it, keep up. You know, I appreciate we'll, it, keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank uh, Mr. you so Palacios, much. I wanna, I wanna make a comment to Mr. Palacios. Um, I know there was a lot of misinformation, but unfortunately in this area, it happens all the time. Yes, uh, but, I just want you, I, but I just want you to clarify it uh, by saying that, you know, um, the companies that we do hire have a bond and, and, and oh. they are responsible for any damages. So it's not incurred on the district. Uh, that's the reason why we have the procurement process the way we have it. So, so uh, I want to thank you so much for, for clarifying that. But unfortunately, you know, um, you know, uh, we've gone down this road, you know, since I've been on the board. So for somehow, somewhere, there's always miscommunication. But at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. It's going to get fixed. Uh, unfortunately, it happened. But you know what? It is what it is. Like the saying goes, you can't break, you, you, and you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So, so well, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's just these uh, facilities are for the betterment of our community. Uh, that's what our, that's what our, um, you know, uh, our constituents wanted. So unfortunately it happens, but you know what, just so they know and the taxpayers know and everybody knows that, that we do have a you know, protective umbrella and that's their bond. Oh, uh, so, and their insurance. Oh, so thank you. Absolutely, we, and we, had, we went ahead and supplied the city with their insurance policy, their bonding information. And again, we're gonna work with the city to make sure that the city's compensated and, and paid in full for, for those damages. So we're walking alongside with them and we'll resolve the matter with them. That's great. great. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Yes, yes. And the important thing is that everything was taken care of and everything's good. So yes, thank yes, you so yes. much. Yes, thank you. At no expense to our taxpayers, so it's even better. No, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not at all. Um, now I'd like to turn over, wanted to turn it over to Mike Alex. I, Mike, are you on? I'm right here. Hope everybody's okay. having a great summer. Nice to talk to y'all. Good. Mike, uh, you, are you going to share screen or do you need me to do sure, it? Sure, I can share a screen. Um, okay. Let me find it here, please. Let me know if y'all can see the screen. Okay, we can see it. Very good. Um, just want to give y'all a, a report and a briefing on where we're at today and the progress we've made to, to see uh, the natatorium and the pack to fruition. Um, uh, we have gone through, just as a refresher, we've gone through schematic design and design development. I've presented to y'all, it's been a month or two ago, uh, as we got through design development, and we started in construction documents, and we're currently about 50% into the construction documents phase, um, and we're working towards um, the completion of that. However, we did take a pause to reevaluate our pricing uh, to make sure that we're within the budget for the project. Uh, we, um, we went through a detailed peer review, uh, thanks to Lada Warren, uh, where she presented uh, her concepts and thoughts and ideas uh, to, to try to get the project into, into budget. And then, and then so uh, from there, uh, we've had several ex um, good, uh, candid meetings with the CMR to try to get the project within the budget. We feel like we are. Uh, we had a successful meeting yesterday, and, I, and I'll let, I don't want to steal Joseph's thunder, I'll let him speak a little bit more in detail about that. But what I'd like to do is just, uh, as a refresher, go through the project. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to chime in, and, and, and I'll try to answer any of those questions. Uh, the design has not changed much. Um, which is a good thing, we've gone through this review um, and, 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 and this pricing to try to get the project back into the budget. Uh, we still have a, uh, the, the pack located here on the site plan and the natatorium located here. The parking configuration is, 
very much the same. I know that y'all had questions about handicap accessibility and those are all being addressed by getting parking up close to the front. Um, and so um, you can see that the site plan really hasn't changed much. We do have access off of the expressway frontage road and then of course off of 8th street here. So you have this, this kind of loop that loops you through in both ways to get in and out, in and out of the site. Um, any questions there? Okay, uh, then I'll, let me get a little bit tired. We suggested a drop off area for on the site, just so you know, uh, board members, hopefully that gets integrated. So I know you have a, a driver, you know, area where the vehicles can get out of the way and drop off uh, gas, uh, it, it can back up traffic. So it was one of the suggestions. Great, hey Laura. Hello, it's good to see you all. <laughs> you too. <laughs> so I'll just um, try to get a little bit tighter here on the on the site here. Just a second. So this is the floor plan. And as you can see, it really hasn't changed much either. I'm getting a little bit closer so that you can see more of the details. But generally speaking, uh, this, these are our main entrances. There's one here where my cursor is. I've got another entrance here and another entrance there. This is the main lobby with stairs going up to uh, a balcony. Uh, this is the audience chamber and its circulation and flow on, on, the, on the outsides of the audience chamber. And then the main stage located here with uh, with ancillary facilities like the practice rooms and rehearsal rooms, the administration and offices over here, restroom facilities over here. Um, and then at the back of house, we have a scene shop, dressing rooms, uh, restrooms, and other storage facilities and other equipment facilities and mechanical spaces at the rear. Uh, the vehicles, the trucks and such that will deliver um, uh, equipment uh, for the scenes will hit this, hit this back entrance here, back up to this back entrance right here where my cursor is. Any questions on the floor plan? And we're still at a thousand seats. Um, it, there's, I think about, if I remember correctly, there's about 800 on the first on the first floor and then 200 more in the balcony. I think that's about right. Um, here's the balcony. You can see it in this plan. Let me get a little tighter just so that you can see a little bit better. There we go. <clears throat> so as a, here's that stair. This is a two-story um, uh, lobby space that gets you up to a circulation rail here it gets you into the entrance of the balcony to these these two doors uh, you know it's a, an actually a smaller little lo second floor lobby here that gives you some breathing room for restroom facilities up here on this level too there's an elevator here too um, and then if you're up here at this elevation you're, you're looking down into the audience chamber and 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 through into the stage Any questions there? Let's go to the next one then, thank you. And so uh, you can see this is a front elevation showing you both buildings together and how they can each other architecturally. What is going on? Mike. Hello. Hello. Okay, better. Something's yeah. going on real bad. Can you hear me fine now? Static of some sort or yeah, yeah. got better. Yeah, it's now. good. It's good. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's my um No, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Nope. Hello, testing one, two, three. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear no, me you're now? good. 
Yes. Okay. Um, so this is the front elevation of the building uh, showing the architectural uh, concepts that we've been talking to you all about since the very beginning and that, that being the wave of the roof and the wave of the canopies, you know, emulating and uh, suggesting the waves of the pool and the waves of music. And, and you can see that in the canopies as you look at these two buildings side by side. This is a front on exterior elevation of the building showing you the, the two buildings side by side. This being, of course, uh, the Performing Arts Center and then the Natatorium. Oops, I'm going too fast. Oops, sorry. So, as you can see, we're still uh, showing this large curvilinear canopy that, and roof that makes up the elements of a large open uh, lobby space with lots of glass. You can see the articulation of, of notes in the glass that represents notes um, notes in music that will will be the uh, uh, the fight song for for San Benito actually so that that those notes are on the um, um, on the glass itself and they're also noted in some of the walls up high. This is the beginning the beginnings of how we're blocking out the interior. You can see how some of the interior might look right now with the the lighting package that we have, uh, the stairs. Uh, you're basically at the top or at, at the top landing of the stairs, looking down the uh, the lobby space. On the left hand side is the back the back side of the audience chamber. On the right hand side is the exterior glass. And we too, as David is, uh, we're taking cues of, of the purple um, in our interior right now and showing some of showing showing some purple accents on some of the walls. You can see that this is beginning to look more and more like uh, what what we had envisioned with regard to a, a balcony. You're at the balcony level here, looking down into the audience chamber, and you can see the stage beyond. And you can see the audio audio visual package there too, so that you have that opportunity to see um, from every angle uh, presentation. Here's, a, here's another down at the floor level showing you sight lines so that everyone has a great view of the stage. Um, you can see above some of the catwalks that are being proposed for lighting and also you begin to see we've got this acoustical package, this dynamic acoustical package you, using curtains that help to tune the space for whatever use uh, you may be using. Some of the board members that went with us on this tr on this trip to Austin and Houston are familiar with the, the variable acoustics that were in some of these auditoriums, and that's what we're trying to do here. <clears throat> in, any any questions before I go on to the uh, to the nat natatorium? No, it's looking really no. nice. Yeah, very. That's it's great. Really it looks nice. great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Uh, the natatorium um, floor plan has not changed. Um, one of the biggest things that we're discussing right now with regard to, to value engineering and making sure we get the project in budget, and Joseph will speak a little bit more about this too <coughs> after my presentation. And that is um, how we can partition this project to get you within the budget. And, and one of those concepts is to have a, have a bid package that has the, the main competitive pool as one package and then the, what we're calling the program pool in a, in a separate package. And so that we can get a better idea about what the costs are associated <laughs> with, with, the, with the program pool. And that's the program pool that we've talked about in several meetings that's going to be used as a kind of a multi-purpose. It'll be a warm-up pool uh, for your competitors. It will also be a, uh, a a program pool for different activities. You've talked you've talked about having second graders learn to swim at this facility, and then you could also use it for other things like water aerobics and other activities um, as you see fit. Um, and so, 
I won't dive into too much of the details of the of the plan because it really has it really hasn't changed. And the, you know, the front entrance is here. Off to the very far right, off the page, is the Performing Arts Center, and they're connected by canopies. This is the front of the building facing the parking lot, and here's here's entrances in this position that gets you into the lobby space, and then this is the entrance that gets you in from the, the Performing Arts Center. Restrooms are configured here in, uh, facing the lobby, and then you also have this main concourse that goes around the pool like this with the two diving wells. Uh, there's stairs that get you into the pool at this location, and then you've got this eight-lane competitive swimming pool. Uh, you'll notice that there are a number of overhead doors here, 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 and here that allow, and then here too, that allow for cross ventilation through the space. Uh, there's a lifeguard first aid station. There's also an office here. Uh, there's, there's boys and girls locker rooms. <coughs> we've, we've done something that, that our pool consultant has done on several projects that he's done that is quite well, and that is that the students can come in through this secondary entrance so that they're, they'd be dry here and be able to go into these facilities here and not mix and mingle with the wet. Uh, and so you're not tracking in, you know, shoes that are dirty throughout the entire facility. They come in here. It also helps for control too. Um, so the, those restrooms are here. These boys and girls dressing rooms and restrooms are here. And then most of this is what I would mm. call a mechanical spaces or the coach's office and some storage. And, but most of this is, the ancillary spaces that make the facility work storage outdoor pool mechanical room here and then of course this is the warm water pool that we're calling your program pool and it has a ramp mm. that goes down into the water which is a much more dignified way for people in wheelchairs to, to get down into the water uh, and, and, and if you if you're if you have a hard time walking too, this is a great way to get into the pool and ease into the pool without having to come downstairs. <clears throat> it too has a series of exterior uh, doors so that you can get in, so you can get cross ventilation. So there's this plan that has the pool, the program pool, and then the, there's this plan, and then there's this plan that does not, that could come in in the future. And so the space is allotted. The building is designed to take this addition at a later date if funding becomes available at a later date. So you have that option in the bid package which we're proposing to put together. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's a couple of interiors um, as we've begun to model the building and get it, you know, further along in the design development and construction documents phase of, of, of our efforts. And you can see that ramp. This is, this is in the foreground is the, is the program pool and the background is the competitive pool. pool. And you'll, you can see through these openings so that there's some mm -hmm. visual connection between the two. Uh, so here's that ramp. Mm -hmm. that gets through the pool. Yeah. Um, start to get a sense of the shape of the size of the space by looking at a couple of these. Now this is from the competitive pool or at the lower end, at the diving well end of the pool. Um, and in the background, of course, is the program pool beyond these two openings. And so here's, here's the, the starting blocks for the divers and the lanes, and you can kind of see the pool. There it is. Hmm. This is the lobby, um, and so we're, Trying to do some fanciful things uh, with the, the the ceiling to to mirror what's happening on the outside with curvilinear suspended ceiling elements and different types of light fixtures that would be in this lobby space. And that's all I have. If y'all have any other questions, hey Mike. Real yes, quick. sir. Yes, sir. Real quick, uh, how, how many ceilings do we look at? A thousand. A thousand inside. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And you gave us an option for uh, the smaller pool without and with, right? That, that's correct. That's correct. I believe we. Um, it, it's a one-time thing. Uh, 
And I think we should go ahead and just do it. It's this thing about waiting and waiting. Uh, I think we need to train our kids at, at a certain age, elementary, and let them get uh, make a decision when they're, they're going to compete. But at least they learn how to swim by the time they get to the high school level. You know? Yeah. If, they, if we leave it out, uh, only certain kids are going to be um, ready to swim. So I, I believe uh, we should just go ahead and do it. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Mike, if, um, or board members, if I can, uh, I can give you the short skinny or I can give you the long in depth uh, version when, when it comes down to the bond program budget. Uh, first and foremost, uh, there are many variables. Uh, obviously we've got multiple projects. We have multiple direct costs, indirect costs, soft costs. Uh, the daunting task that was placed upon us and our firm and Laura and, and the team takes this very serious to make sure that we maximize all of your bond dollars as effective and efficiently as possible. We found great success in all the three facilities. Uh, if you look at all three facilities, they, they, they maximize all programming. I know, I, I know Mike didn't, uh, I, and I don't know if, if we want to reserve that to after my comments, Mike, about the programming related to the PAC. We did not make changes that would compromise programming by any means. Uh, we don't propose to do that, uh, much less on the indoor, the PAC, nor the natatorium. Um, we've had challenges. There's every construction project has challenges. Uh, but the short skinny of it, and I can dive into any questions, is the fact that after the drill and, and the out of the box thinking with the introduction of geo peers for foundation to go from a deep foundation to shallow foundation, uh, the rigorous work that the Rofa Red Group has done with the assistance of Laura Warren in the peer review sessions, we are, I'm happy to report, right under, if not right around your budget uh, of the $40 million package that you took to bond to the, to the voters of San Benito. We have, we have not compromised any allowances, any contingencies, and there are still, are still a couple of areas that we believe that we're gonna yield savings. Um, so to say that we are where we need to be at this point uh, to move forward, we're excited that we did not compromise any elements within those facilities. And uh, you know, we're, we're, we're happy to tell you that we're on track uh, to, to, to fully fulfill our commitment to the board and making sure that we maximize your dollars at every effort. Uh, even to the point to where we think that there might be an option to, to assure that we make sure that that pulls in there. Uh, we're optimistic. Of course, there's a lot of work to do. There's going to be a lot of work to do between now until we get to, G, the, to the GMP uh, phase, which is already right before us. Uh, but we got a great team. Hard work coming from the Roper Red Group, Laura Warren, uh, your civil team. We believe we're going to get where you need to get. When traditionally, most construction projects come over budget and they're having to go through these extensive drills. We're doing preemptively so that we don't end up in that state down the road. Laura, if you want to add to that. And, and with that comes plan B. The, the, the idea is to make sure that we don't have any projects that end up being a shelf project, meaning it was great to the planning process, and then once we receive pricing, that we get the hard burn of saying, oh my God, this is too much. And preliminary prices, were indicating that we needed to go back and look at plan B. So we went back and started looking at, at the project and trying to see what is low hanging fruit, meaning what items can we take up in order to be able to provide you with, with what you need initially. Um, the idea of the warm pool, uh, which I think was initially solved and now I, I heard as a program, you can teach children on the other pool. I know this because I, I've been an assistant scout master for Boy Scouts for nine and a half years. And we teach the scouts and, and young children. My kids started learning uh, to swim also at second grade. And they were going to Nicky Hall High School uh, pool, and that's what they learned. The, you have limited time. So the children have to be taken there by bus. They have to have time to change do uh, stretching exercises before they get into the pool, and they get in the pool 30 to 45 minutes. Um, you can teach them in that pool and say, oh my God, it's deep. That's why we use the roping. The children will never be left alone. You have a ratio of teachers and students, you know, inside the pool and outside the pool. 
and, and you can get them out of there. So if, if for some reason we cannot afford to have the warm-up pool at this time, it's not the end of the world, and you will still be able to teach your, your children. At that age, what they do is that they, they get down the little ladder and then they hold on to the edge. You know, they're still learning how to kick, they're not letting go at that time. They're learning to put their face inside the water, they're blowing. Um, and then little by little, they start getting, you know, more comfortable and then going further into the pool. Um, again, I, I witnessed and participated in those kind of programs. So, you know, I don't want you to feel bad if for some reason that second pool cannot take one in your butt. You will still be able to teach your children, everybody will be able to join in. Now, if you can afford it and or later on can be added, then that those additional programs to uh, uh, for the community can be added. Uh, but we want to make sure that you first have within your package within the forty million dollars what your basic needs are. So that's that's where the idea came in of, of separating itself. So. Uh we're uh, we're open for any questions at this point uh, for many board members. We're all available to answer any questions you may have. Uh, Joseph and Mike, or Mike, what is our timeline here, uh, give or take? Uh, okay. What, how many? Are we looking I, at a year, a month? Uh, how many months? No, I, and I'm glad you an answer your you asked that question. So this is really developing to be somewhat of an onion. So we're all working concurrently. So right now, as we're doing the civil package, that's already let. There's some elements that have been let. We are the, G, the first GMP will be issued within the next 30 days. That's all the site preparation, access, staging, uh, the, the building pad site, all of these elements that will lead us to the vertical construction. So we'll be under construction in all those elements within the next couple of months uh, to be able to uh, take care of the utilities. Now on the vertical construction, that gives Mike's team a chance to wrap up the uh, construction documents so we can prepare the foundation plan. So in essence, everything's unfolding itself concurrently and right on time, just the way I, it's just working out to be that way, which, which has allowed us the opportunity to maximize your dollars and assure that we did our due diligence to make sure that we, and, and some of the things to note, uh, originally we're on a deep, uh, deep foundation plan where there was 287 uh, drill piers uh, with ground treatment systems. We've been, we've been able to save $2.8 million just on that benefit of the out of the box thinking ground treatment systems. Uh, again, on the civil side, the fact that the city's covering the utilities, that's another 750000 So those are the great job that, that if you give us enough time, we're going to hit those points. Uh, I know that we're not done yet. Laura's still working with Mike. We're all working collaboratively as a team as they're putting these packets together but construction continues to unfold itself. So again, we are un under construction. The next package will be out within the next couple of weeks for all of the sites. That would lead to a groundbreaking if the board so uh, chooses. Uh, staging area will be set. Uh, that package is not a long, on the GMP number one, it's not a long period. It's anywhere between 30 to 60 days. So you're gonna see everything kind of coming into line where construction is gonna pretty much never stop from from now and onward. Well, I, want to, I want to thank you, Mr. Joseph thank and Juan for the explanation. Thank I think uh, I think one of the biggest pushes here was just to make sure that if we're gonna invest in an aquatic center, what you know, what, what our community, you know, and, and our constituents uh, voted for to make sure that we maximize and make sure all the kids can use it at any single capacity. So of course, you know, um, you know, we rolled out that plan. We, we uh, express what, you know, what the needs are and uh, you guys are the professionals and the experts that are, that are making it happen. So, so with that in mind, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I want to thank you so much for, for putting every single detail in there and, and making sure that, that it is going to get used to the maximum of its capabilities for our kids. So yes, I want sir. to thank you guys for your professionalism. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Alex, I want to thank you so much for your, for your, for your hard work and your due diligence. I know this, this process is not easy. I know there's long meetings, um, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, I know Mr. Palacios is, 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 is pushing for the for the for protecting the, the dollar, the bond dollar. And I know Mr. Alex, you're you're rushing it to do what you need to do to get this thing done. So I just want to thank you guys so much for 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 uh, you know for for putting your faith you know in these projects and, and making sure they come out with the best interest of our kids in our district and and and, their, and our constituents in mind. Thank you all. If, if, if I, thank you. If I could just on a, on a on a comment. And this goes to commendation to your superintendent, Dr. Carmen. You know, he put a really, really, really firm line 
on assuring that everything is done all the way turnkey within the bond program uh, that you took to the voters. He has not let up. It has forced everyone to really sharpen that pencil and make sure that we think about these out of the box uh, solutions, alternatives. It has really been a daunting task to get where we're at today. That doesn't come easy. I know that we've had some challenging conversations amongst the groups, but it's because we have the right heart and mind. We all want to make sure that we don't compromise what you're expecting, but at the same time that we effectively got there with the dollars you gave us to get there. And I feel good after, you know, up to now, up to yesterday, we're all feeling a lot better of where we got or where we're at at this point and where we're going to get. So we're going to continue working hard for y'all, making sure that we don't skip a beat, making sure that we all get to the finish line together. And we want to appreciate, we want to thank you for that opportunity. And again, thanks for uh, the Dr. Carmen. He, he does run a tight ship. And uh, we're, we're appreciative of it because it really keeps us mindful of what the, what the end goal is. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you like Dr. Sherman. I'd like to say thank you for the kind words and um, I really appreciate the opportunity. I really appreciate this opportunity. This has been a, it's been a labor of love for our firm, um, you know, and we've all enjoyed very much working with you guys on this team. Y'all have got a really great team. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you for your hard work. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Any more questions, board members? Okay. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you all. Stay safe. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Bye bye. Then move on to agenda item 2.3 review and discussion of the memorandum of understanding between San Benito CISD and Honeywell. Dr. Carmen? A proposal um, for Honeywell to come into some of our higher volume buildings and before we open them, give us some insight in how we can do so as safely as possible. Um, so we know several of the things that we, we need to be looking at, thermal imaging, um, you know, taking kids' temperatures as they enter the building. Um, we know we need to increase our fresh air flow through HVAC. Um, we, we know there are several things we need to be looking at, PPE, et cetera. But what this company um, is proposing, and I think would be good just to make sure on our high volume buildings, like the high school or middle schools, cash, where we have so many kids coming in through one entrance at one time, when we open to face-to-face -face instruction, that we wanna be as safe as we can. Some of our small buildings, it'll be easier uh, to handle the volume of students, but I think it's worth spending a little bit to get a, a company to come in and, and do an evaluation to make sure that when we're able to open, we are doing so as safely as we can. Okay, Doc, so, so elaborate a little bit on this, on the Honeywell company. So it comes and evaluates what, so how is it gonna, is it gonna put some policy and procedures into place, some structure on how we're to handle the situation or do they provide that service also? How does that work, Doc? So we can choose, so one of the things they brought up in our meeting um, that I hadn't even thought about was what if you have a student show up uh, with, a, with a fever but they don't have a ride home right away. You have to have a location to put them, and you don't want, if they have the virus, you don't want that being spread out through your HVAC system. So they talked about a negative pressure um, room. So one of the things they'll look at, based on these buildings they'll be, they'll be evaluating, which room makes the most sense to do that. Um, that's not something that had come up in any previous conversations. So when they, when they brought that one idea to the table, I thought it might be worth looking to see what else they might have. Um, but yes, if, if, if we bid out our thermal imaging uh, for these larger campuses, for example, uh, Honeywell has a product. It uh, doesn't mean we have to go with them. We'll have the plan. We can choose the vendor to implement it. It could be Honeywell. It could be any, anybody else off of Bible or any other approved vendors. But they will provide us with a plan on how to make those buildings as safe as possible. Okay. Any question? Yeah, I got a question. We're looking into solutions as far as how to take care of the kids and everything. I think we need to start looking into when we're going to start the schools before we start doing a solution. Because uh, you mentioned Dr. Cash. Uh, Dr. Cash has over 650 kids compared to other schools at 350. So how do we separate so many kids from one school another school or do we keep 600 kids in that school you see um, I'd like to do, look at the base first before we even get into the contract with anybody I, I like a plan 
in, in implemented it first before we start doing things like uh, subcontracting people we don't need yet, and we might not even open. My plan is, my thinking is, hey, let's think, uh, think on a, a plan together and uh, when we're gonna open and uh, what are we gonna do with 600 kids in one school and 200 in another school? That's, that's my point of view, it's up to you. Right, right. So, I, so I think some of that conversation, I plan on coming up with our, our calendar discussion tonight, but uh, since it's out there, we um, have on a separate agenda consideration for the board to approve a calendar that gives us an additional two weeks before we begin instruction at all and begin completely remotely. That fact that at some point, we're gonna have kids in our buildings. And so bringing this vendor in or, or anybody else to evaluate our buildings simply helps us know how to be prepared when that eventually happens. Based on the calendar for you tonight, the um, remote learning would start on August the 26th. TEA's guidelines, right now tell us that for three weeks we can do remote only so if nothing were to change we would look in at september 15th or 16th for live instruction for parents who choose to send their students now based on our survey that's less than 20 percent of parents who want their kids in the building full-time a couple of other factors uh, judge trevino Cameron County has been um, very open about not wanting to open campuses, just like the superintendents and probably much of our, our staff not wanting to open the buildings before it's, it's safe to do so. Uh, he put out an order this afternoon, I think just after four o'clock, stating that face-to-face -face live instruction cannot start before September 8th. Our current calendar accommodates that. We will be starting at least a week later. Um, additionally, uh, TA has given us those three weeks, but um, I, I believe our, our governor is working with our commissioner, right? and I think there's an opportunity that um, we may get longer than, than the three weeks um, from the state. Um, I think it's preemptive or preliminary to, to come out and say we want to plan that we're not going to do face-to-face -face instruction the first semester. Um, I think districts that do that, unless there's uh, some type of, of support for that, they could be doing so without funding. Um, so at this point, as of today, with the calendar in front of the board tonight, uh, remote instruction would start August 26th, three weeks later um, or more, we would start with some live instruction. Okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good because there is a lot of concerns about, you know, the parents and the staff and everything, and I know that's what we're here for, you know, for the safety and the well-being of all, you know, our students and staff. And, uh, and I'm glad that we're going to start remotely. And, and like you said, if we need to go longer, you know, I don't mind if we have to go, you know, at least for the first semester, but if not, you know, let's see how far, and hopefully this will stop, you know, this pandemic will stop soon, but, you know, or they come up with something else. But other than that, I know that safety is a priority and, and the well being of everybody. So, you know, we want parents to be able to, when this, when we're ready to, you know, get the students um, face to face that they're ready and, and feel that they're going to be, you know, uh, safe being in, in, you know, in the school. So I'm glad that, you know, we'll just take it, you know, one day at a time. And if it's going to take longer, you know, we'll just leave it like that. So that's great. Thank you, Dr. Carmen. And you yes, know, and there's a lot, a lot of parents, very concerned parents that are, are just determined not to send their kids to school. Uh, and that's their choice. We have to be very careful. We've got to think about what we're we going to do and how we're we going to do it. Well, you know, uh, not, only, will, not only that, uh, I will address this later at another time uh, during the other committee. Thank you. Okay, okay. I think right now, uh, okay. and I, since I, it I was open, uh, hold on, Mr. Lopez. Let okay. me let me say something. I, I think it's important that uh, Dr. Carmen, the original discussion on Honeywell. If you have other companies that may come in and and do that uh, type of pro. Uh, preventative measures uh, for the possibility of later on opening up the, uh, the uh, district, I think it is important to begin that uh, preventive, pre preventative measures now and, and begin having those dialogues with that. In addition to that, we, we also need to begin educating ourselves and, and, uh, 
and and our our instructors, our administrators, and whatnot on the approach on how to sanitize, how not to sanitize, and whatnot. I can assure you the the calls that I receive, people are scared. They're afraid of what's going to happen. They're afraid Terrifying. of exposure, and and it's Terrifying. important that we we need to make sure that we take cover. We we cover all aspects of it. For example, if a child gets ill, what's the procedure on that? Who's exposed? What's the procedure on that? If the teacher gets ill, what's the procedure on that? So, you know, those discussions have to be happening right now. And, and, I, and, and I commend you for taking that action on, on reaching out to companies that are going to be bringing in some form of, uh, of airflow cleanliness or whatnot. I think that's very important. Secondly, the other dialogue regarding the, uh, the uh, opening of schools, uh, I, I'm reading and I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm seeing that even from the very top, they're saying it's gonna be, it's gonna be up to the local board, uh, uh, at the local board level to decide when we're gonna open. You know, and 20%, and it's 20% it's of, of, the, of the population don't want their, you know, want their kids in and the 80% do not want them. It, you know, we have to be very, very cautious on the way we're gonna, we, we're gonna address this. Teachers are calling, administrators are calling. They're very concerned because they also have children as, as we all do. So, you know, I think that we'll, we'll elaborate more in a curriculum committee, in a curriculum committee. You know, let's, let's look at all of this. Let's make sure that the communication is being given to the, uh, to the school district uh, employees and administrators because they, they feel that they're still lost. They're, they're, they're getting information from all over the place, but not from us. And I think that's, that's what we need to make sure that we advise them, hey, we've got a plan. We're working on this. We're, we're at, at least regularly, just so they could be assured that, you know, that they're safe. Because I think that's important, the safety. Thank you. Okay. One last comment. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Mendez, you've got some really good points. And one reason our employees and our communities have not seen a, a hard, fast, uh, written plan is because it keeps changing. Uh, TEA just last week came up with what we could do, and I'm pretty sure it's going to change again this week. Um, our county judge just gave the order today. So we've got a draft of a plan to reopen, and it includes everything from busing to, tra I mean, busing to um, meals um, to how we're going to get kids in the building. If there's an issue with the student, if there's an issue with employee, it uh, talks about the, the remote instructional plan using asynchronous instruction. Uh, and actually, we'll be meeting tomorrow. We have a, a task force involving um, all of our campus principals, directors, uh, lead nurse, and then SLT. And we'll be finalizing some of those plans. And I say finalizing because if the state changes the, you know, what we can do in a week, we're going to be flexible enough to make that adjustment. But at the heart of what we're doing, we know keeping our kids and our staff safe has to come first. Right, you know, and I wanna, that's right. I wanna, You're yeah. Absolutely yeah. right. And that's one of the things that we've been talking about since, since all, this whole pandemic started and, and, and rolling out the CDC, you know, rollout and making sure that everybody practices is social distancing and wearing masks and, and, and all that good stuff. But, you know, uh, back, to my, back to the comment on this, back to this agenda or potential agenda item here. Um, I think, you know, me personally, I, in my opinion, I think it's extremely important right now. We're talking about two different things here. We're talking about one aspect about opening schools. That's one thing. And of course, that's a very sensitive subject because I have a 10 year old coming to this, to, to this school district. So, so I have my, my, my concerns about opening it up, you know, uh, prematurely. But second of all, we have to focus and start looking at uh, additional avenues because this, this is not going anywhere, folks. You know, it's going to be here for a while. So the numbers can start decreasing. But when you look at areas in our school district, so we can make some, some improvement to protect our staff and our kids. So if we can get some help along the way to do that, I'd rather be proactive and do it now than wait two or three months down the line and then we're going to be, we're going to be playing That's catch up. Right. Okay, I, I, we can't put a price tag on a, on a, person's, you know, on a person's life. That's so, right. You know, so if we can do this pro proactively right now, uh, you know, uh, then I, I support this process. Um, and then trying to see if, where, and when we can, we can implement, you know, these, these policies and procedures or equipment, additional equipment to keep our staff and our kids safe. You know, uh, so, 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 um, you know, I'm a little biased by that because I'm a parent first folks. So, so that's one of the things why, why, um, I, I think this is extremely important. Um, I, I also understand that, you know, I understand Mr. Rosa's point. We don't know when we're going to open up schools and you know what, nobody has an answer to that. Uh, you know, everybody knows we're going to start, uh, uh, virtual first and foremost, we know that, but. Uh, I, I think what we need to do is really look at this unprecedented time to see where we can make some 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 improvements um, and just just stay ahead of the curve. I mean, you know, 
Um, it's a small investment to do so, but I, just, I want the teachers and, and, the, and the parents and the kids to feel comfortable that we've made, you know, progress while they're, while they're, while they're at home, just to make sure that when, do, when they do come back, that we've done, you know, uh, additional protective measures for them and their, and their, and their safety. Well said, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lopez. Very well said. So you, Thank so you. So you want an agenda item? Agenda item. Okay. Yes. Yes, of course. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Uh, let's move on to, to 3.1. Co committee concerns, anyone? No. Okay. Uh, we adjourned, this, we adjourned the, the building committee meeting at exactly 6.43 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>